What's up, Brilliant Coders? Welcome back to the fourth and final video in our animated art series. By now, we're practically pros and we're gonna put all our newfound coding skills to use to make the most epic animation. Okay then, let's get into it. Come with me to the code zone. We are going to start this video by talking about functions. We'll follow the same logic from our previous videos and create our own function. The first thing I want to do is to go to the bottom of my draw function and create a function called draw flowers. We are going to the bottom of the draw function so that the flowers will be drawn on top of the afro instead of behind them. Inside the draw flowers function, I want to create my first flower. We can use a circle as the center and the petals. Now let's place a rose colored flower with a yellow center on the top left hand corner of the afro. Then place five circles around the center forming the petals. Remember, you can be creative and shape and color the petals however you want. One flower looks good, but we want to create many flowers over the afro. So how do we accomplish this? That's right, we'll use a for loop. See how everything we learned is just coming together? We are going to make a for loop that places our flowers across the x-axis of our afro. In order to do this, we first need to find the correct x value for each yellow center, and then find the correct x value for each pink petal, and then place those x values in our for loop. Let's start with placing our yellow flower center in the for loop. I want to start at 110, which is where the yellow center of our current flower is, and stop at 420. That means we have a space of 300 to place as many flowers as we want to, but I just want to have three flowers across the top. To do this, I need to remember that every time the conditions are true, the for loop will run. Therefore, I will add 140 to all of my x coordinates. That means the first flower will be at its current position, then the next will be 110 plus 140 equals 250, and last flower will be at 250 plus 140 equals 390. It's compounding, like my head after all of this new information, so make sure you take a break if you need it. Let's replace the x coordinates in our circles with the x value from our for loop. Okay, now that we have moved our yellow flower centers across the x-axis, we've got to move our petals as well in order to make a complete flower. So to do this, we have to subtract or add the difference between the current x value of each petal and the x variable from our for loop to recreate the shape of the flower. The current position of the first petal is x equals 121, so we subtract 121 from 110, and the difference is 11. We can replace the x value with x plus 11, and this will move the petal to the same position for each flower that is created. Then we will repeat the steps for the other petals. Take a look at the code. You should now have three identical flowers across the top of the afro. Wrapping our flowers in one for loop and replacing the x coordinates values creates many flowers in a row from left to right. But I also want them to go up and down across the y axis of the afro. This means I need to create a grid of flowers. Think of it like a tic-tac-toe board. Okay, so that sounds gorgeous, but how would I do that? We can use another for loop to add flowers in a column or up and down the y-axis. So let's add another for loop. But inside the first one that represents all of our new y values for our flowers, I'm going to name the variable y because we are going to replace the y coordinate in our circle functions. We can use the current yellow center of the first flower, which starts at y equals 130. 
I want the column to stop at 450 and put a space of 130 pixels between each flower. Now that we moved the center of all of our flowers, we are going to repeat the steps we completed previously to determine the Y values for our pink petals. Why don't we do that now? Go get to work, I'll just wait here. I mean, working, of course. <laughs> Great, now you should have rows and columns of flowers in a three by three grid on the afro. If you comment out the face, then you will be able to see the other two flowers behind the face. Next, I'll add our pulsating animation to the flowers. So I want the flowers to grow to a certain size, then return to the same size, but in the negative direction. You may be thinking right now, what the heck is she talking about? But I promise it's not that complicated. A great example of an object moving to a certain value in the positive direction, then returning to an equal value in the opposite direction is a wave. When you look at waves in the ocean, they move up and down. The top of one wave may be 15 feet tall, but the bottom of the swell may be 15 feet deep. This is not dissimilar to waves in math. In math, waves can be represented using the sine function. The sine function keeps track of the angles in a wave. The angles are either moving in a positive direction or a negative direction. If you look at our example wave, you can see the wave increasing to one as the angle increases, but once we get to 90 degrees, the wave starts to decrease back down towards zero at 180 degrees, then gradually towards negative one as you increase to 270 degrees. Then the wave turns towards the positive direction as you get closest to 360, where it starts its cycle over again at zero. We can use the sine function to increase and decrease our petals to equal and opposite values. So the wave is actually making our flowers pulsate. How cool! Right above our draw flowers function, let's create a variable called wave speed and set the value to zero. Below wave speed, create another variable called max diameter and set its value to 40. As the name implies, we want the maximum diameter, or width, of our petals to be 40. Now let's use these variables to create our animation. Inside our draw function, we are going to create another variable called diam, short for diameter, and set its value to the following. The operation works as follows. Every time the draw flower function runs, the diam variable will multiply our sine function times the max diameter we want the petals to be. Now, change the last value in our circle functions to the diam. Remember, the last value in our circle determines the size of each circle. Currently, if we add the diameter function, then our petals don't move. Hmm, why is that? It's because the wave is set to zero, so that means there is no movement in our waves. Remember that the sine function moves like a wave. Once it reaches a certain height in the positive direction, then it will move to the same height or depth, but in the negative direction. If you put it at zero, it doesn't have any direction to move in. Let's update the wave speed variable so that we can see our animation. To do that, we can reuse our favorite total sum operation. By adding the total sum operation, we can update the sine function wave speed value to one. So every time the draw flowers function updates, the petals move in a positive direction towards our max diameter, then returns to equal an opposite direction of the max diameter. Now these flowers are moving and grooving. Look at that. 
Now, I really love this piece because I just love that it shows our big Afro natural hair and the flowers just like add a really nice beauty touch to it. So drum roll, please. Because now I can officially crown you queen digital artist. You just made it through another four part video series on how to code digital art with animation. <sighs> and queen, with this honor comes great responsibility to use your skills and talents to continue making art to change the world. Make sure to tune in next week because we're gonna meet with a dope real life digital artist who is gonna drop some knowledge on how you can turn your digital art into NFTs on the blockchain. So until we meet again, stay cute and stay coding. <laughs>